Hi, a very good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for spending your lovely evening with me as well as Dr. Chong. Uh, my name is Nana and I will be I I'm your nutritionist for today as well as a so for today, we actually have uh, invited a really exclusive guest to actually um, share more with us on this se session of prostate health. Um, so let's get into this topic to find out how we can actually get stronger together. So this topic is especially exclusive for men only. All right, so I will list some statistics with you. So just want to share with you on the topic of benign prostatic hyperplasia. For men between the age of 51, and 60 years old, five of them people will actually have this BP. And along with age, for men in between the old age of 80, nine out of 10 people will actually be affected by benign prosthetic hyperplasia. So we can actually see that along with age, the risk uh, for BPH will in fact actually increase. So um, you might want to ask, actually, is there a cure for this? Is there anything we can actually do about this? So for this specific question, I will leave for our expert to answer later on. All right, so that's why we have invited a really special and exclusive guest together with us, um, our guest speaker, Dr. Chong Kien Tai, uh, who is a surgeon as well as a health tech innovator. So Dr. Chong himself is a urology surgeon practicing mainly in Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital and Farrah Park Hospital. So for him, he actually sees patients in both conditions as well as complex urologic cancers after completing full-time advanced clinical urologic oncology fellowship at the prestigious Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, USA in the year of 2009. Dr. Chang himself, he's also an advocate for medical education, health tech innovation, and holistic urological cancer care. He is also the co-founder of Asia MD with its mission to overcome fake medical news and to help the public find the best medical care at this website of asiamd.com. So for me, myself, I've already visited this uh, uh, website a couple of times. So um, this website actually has published a lot of medical reports, a lot of uh, medical articles that is uh, being generated as well as being supported by a lot of medical doctors as well as a lot of uh, medical practitioners. So inside this uh, uh, website itself, you can also find a wide range of doctors, a list of doctors from different various fields so that you don't have to waste time finding uh, uh, your own, the doctors that you actually need. So if you really want to find out the latest information and also the latest medical news and of uh, more reliable sources, this is actually a website that you can actually go to. All right, so you might actually feel that uh, if Dr. Chong, you find him familiar, it's actually because uh, Dr. Chong himself has actually been featured in various media before, including uh, those that is featured in the media channel you I think channel you, yeah, the body SOS. So uh, he has to share about uh, prostate cancer. He also, he's also being invited uh, to this FM radio by uh, this radio show as well. And also some of his uh, medical advices, suggestions has also been published in this. Uh, All right, so enough of me saying, let's welcome Dr. Chong. Hi, Dr. Chong. Hi, hi, thank you, Nana. Thank you for inviting me. It's like going on your show. <laughs> thank you so much for actually yeah i'm really happy to uh to you again so i uh, just want to um know more about you dr chong because i've been talking so much i believe that our audience they really want to hear more from you so dr chong could you share more with us about your uh, medical journey uh, i've been a doctor for more than 20 years and i'm a urologist now so a lot of people ask uh, what does a urologist do is uh actually a surgeon who do two separate things. Number one, I tell people I'm an expensive water pipe uh, cleaner because anytime there's any problem with your urine system that joins the kidney to the bladder or letting the urine flow, I will make sure it's uh, cleared properly. But the second thing I also do as a urologist is actually I'm a gynae for men. Then many people mm -hmm. ask, how come I'm a gynae for men? Can you imagine if uh, for men, uh, usually, if you have some problem with the private part, some questions, you can't go to a gynae, right? Because gynae is for ladies to go. So, the gentleman also comes to urologists to find out about uh, what they have, any problem with their testes, the penis, the prostate problem. 
uh, they also come to uh, urologists. So that's what I do as well. So that's basically my day job. And of course, uh, I love to do uh, medical information. And thanks for sharing one mm -hmm. of my uh, 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 startups that actually helps to um, make sure we don't have fake medical news. So thank you very much. Yeah, this is a website and it's a very good website that uh, to share with more people so that people can get access to the most reliable uh, reliable medical news as well. All right, so it seems like you are really the saver for a lot of men, which is the reason why I'm very happy that you are uh, together with us again for this session. So I've been talking, so I believe that everyone um, is ready to really hear more from Dr. Chong. This is our very exciting Q&A session. So let's see what kind of questions that we, our audience actually have for Dr. Chong. Okay, so Dr. Chong, the first question that, uh, that we have for you is, will taking, uh, sorry, this one, uh, after surgery, how long will it take to recover for so thank you for the question. Uh, I assume you are talking about surgery for prostate. So it depends on the type of surgery for prostate. Uh, the traditional resection of prostate uh, usually takes about one hour and most patients go home the next morning uh, for my patients. And usually one week later, uh, they are back to their normal health. Uh, but there will be some blood in the urine for about one to two weeks when the wound is healing. Compared to the minimal invasive, the, the ones that are less invasive procedure, actually the recovery depends on what is used. For example, if you use Euro leaf where the is a rubber band kind of principle where you open the channel, immediately you can pass urine on the same day. And patients, if they do it at about nine, uh, eight, nine o'clock, by lunchtime they are at home already. So the prostate does not change in size because we are simply opening up the curtain. So it doesn't really change the size, but patients can pass urine straight away. How, the other things will be using steam or microwave. That recovery may take different time for different patients. But when you do a steam treatment, like the one using a resume, a lot of patients still need to continue to wear urine catheter for some days or weeks. So it depends on the type of surgery is done. So usually I would say by about two weeks to one month, every patient should have uh, recovered completely. Mm. So in that case, like um, some people actually ask like after they have undergone this surgery itself, will, actually, will it actually come back again? Oh, that's a very good question. Everyone asks. So surgery for prostate actually reduces the size of the prostate so that uh, remain, there will always be some remaining prostate because before operation, you have testosterone, correct? Affecting the size of prostate. After the surgery, the next day, you're still a man. You still have the same testosterone. Mm. So whatever prostate that remains will still continue to grow in time. Sometimes it grows faster, sometimes it grows slower. And in time to come, maybe some patients take five years, 10 years time, prostate can always grow back to bigger size. But no worries about it because you can always start taking some medicine or maybe need to do another procedure again. But there are also patients whose prostate grows slowly over the next 5, 10 or 20 years that you don't have to get any treatment. So yes, the question is a very good one. Every prostate mm -hmm. continues to grow because we are still men and we still have testosterone. Even though when we I grow see. older, testosterone may become less, but we still have testosterone. Mm. Okay, so I saw a very interesting question here. Um, one of them actually asked, will we think increase risk of prostate enlargement? Weightlifting. Will weightlifting increase the risk, risk, the, of, the prostate risk of prostate enlargement? I don't know any good study that show weightlifting changes it, but I do know that some weightlifters actually take steroids. And I do mm. know some uh, weightlifters take uh, protein supplements. Some mm. of these can affect the growth of prostate if it's converted to testosterone. That's because it's an artificial testosterone. But we do not know whether the, the, those uh, extra supplements that they are taking well, steroids can actually affect the prostate size 
that group because no one actually take a study okay weight lifter one group the other one don't wait and 20 year later we measure the side prostate i think i don't think there's such a study but because Maybe of heaven. supplements that uh that like steroids or things that can change to testosterone then you must be careful whether it will affect the prostate growth but doing then weight lifting case, alone uh, uh, but doing weight lifting alone improve your muscle lah the bicep become bigger uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is also good in a way yeah. okay then since we're on this topic right then like how about the use of Viagra like does it increase the prostate size the use of Viagra is actually doesn't affect the size of prostate Viagra actually relaxes the blood vessel in the penis it's actually letting more blood flow go into the penis remember we talked about mm. having a healthy heart is good for erection yeah. for your strong for your heart and strong for sex that's because the blood flow goes to the penis so viagra actually improve the oxygenation and blood flow of the penis so it does not mm. affect the uh, prostate itself i see i see okay so uh, also one of them asked like after doing the treatment is it going like and i don't know which treatment but they say after the treatment is it going to affect men's sexual performance Mm, depends on what treatment you are doing. So, for example, the medication, the oral, the, the, the tablet oral medication will have some sexual side effects, but it helps to pass yeah. urine. Uh, and then different treatment, traditional surgery with resection of prostate sometimes can cause uh, erection issues. It can also cause a control of urine that may not be so good if the, prost the surgery is done uh, not so not so well done, but there are also other treatment like the less invasive procedure. Uh, one of them, which is uro lift, is does not affect erection issue because there's no energy. It doesn't heat up or cook anything. It's just a, 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 a implant that opens up the prostate. That one doesn't have any heat. So when there's no heat, it doesn't destroy any part of the surrounding uh, 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 tissue. So it depends on which treatment is done. So if you want more details about each treatment and how to choose, best to ask the specialist so that we can go through what's the good and bad uh, part about each treatment. Mm, so it's a bit more complicated. I like need to dwell into each treatment and talk about the pros right. and cons yeah. of each every treatment, treatment, right? Remember, every medication, every treatment has a good part. There's always a potential side effect. So always ask the doctor yeah. what's the good and bad. Then we can have a better discussion. Mm. Okay. Can so um one of them also asks, oh, once the prostate is enlarged, it will not shrink. When the prostate is it's enlarged, a, yeah, it doesn't become it will not shrink unless you do something to it, like take medication or do some procedure. You're right. And is uh, not possible to prevent prostate enlargement as a man because as a man, you already have uh, testosterone in your body. So it mm. will definitely become larger with time. But everyone's testosterone is different, uh, amount of testosterone over your lifetime. So the prostate can become smaller. Uh, actually, sorry, the prostate can become bigger, but yours may be smaller than your neighbor or next door. Yeah, but eventually all prostate get bigger. Mm, okay, okay. So, how about people of older age? Like, would you actually recommend the older people, like, let's say, like, 75 years old and above, would you recommend them to actually still go for this surgery if, let's say, they have BPH as well? BPH actually can be treated, most patients can be treated with a medication. But first, first mm. the most important thing is see whether there's need to treat. A lot of prostate enlargement you may not need to treat if your symptoms is very mild remember the ipss the uh, the international prostate symptom score so yeah. don't just anyhow take medicine because sometimes medicine too much medicine is also not good for you only when you actually need treatment then consider taking tablet if the tablet is not something that helps you you can consider procedure or operation so the best mm. is if it's very mild don't take unnecessary medicine Mm, okay okay so i've seen this or in a catalog like how to prevent prostate enlargement i think this 
is most people's concern, like whether can I prevent this at all? <laughs> uh, not that I know. Only I know if you're a woman, it doesn't happen. Because all <laughs> men have testosterone. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's yeah. like uh, if you are a lady, uh, if you ask, will I, uh, can I not get menopause? Mm. Uh, it's a, so it's like a, a men, men's thing also. Men's, it's like men's, a men's menopause. Prostate, yeah, prostate is used for uh, giving nutrition to seam, the, the sperm and uh, as part of semen. So that's part of being a man. Our prostate will enlarge with time. Okay, so there's nothing to like, but like what we mentioned just now, there's some nutrients that might actually help to you know delay this process so that the prostate health can be it will delay the process of enlargement. Not saying that it won't delay, not saying that it won't get enlarged, but just delay so that you won't get it, it won't grow so quickly, right? Like some of the nutrients that we did mention just now in that case. The key thing to know is that if you feel that there's some problem with the urination check with a doctor. It may not be a prostate problem. So, mm -hmm. but if you find a doctor to help us whether it's a prostate issue or whether it's something else. So always check with a doctor first if you're not so sure. Mm, okay. So one of them also asked, how about lack of libido? Like, is a lack of libido or sex drive a sign of an enlarged prostate? Mm. When there is a when you when a man's sex drive become less, it can be a few things. One is your boss is very stressful to you. Yeah, because <laughs> because uh, sex drive for men is not just a matter of whether you have enough testosterone, whether you mm. can function, but also because of psychological stress or other events in life that can happen. The blood flow to the mm. penis, and also when we grow older, sometimes the blood flow is not so good or testosterone mm. has changed. So when you see a specialist, normally a few things we'll check. Number one, we'll find out from you, is there any stress level that can be reduced? Second, how's your heart health? Third, whether you have enough testosterone. Actually, it's a simple blood test that can check the amount of testosterone in the body. So those mm. are some of the things we check. And there are a few types of hormone that affect erection and the libido, so whether your sex drive. So those are things that as a specialist, those are some of the things we look for. Mm, okay, okay, got it. So actually, um, okay, there's also a question they ask like, um, when it comes to like benign like uh, BPH, right? Does it actually increase the risk of like developing into uh, prostate cancer as well? So when we have a BPH, it stands for benign prostate hyperplasia. That term, mm. it means it's not cancerous. It's called benign. So another term, mm. sometimes we use enlarged prostate. So in a prostate that enlarges, uh, there are always a chance some of the enlarged prostate cells become cancerous. So we know that in Singapore, the latest report says that prostate cancer is the number two cancer in, in uh, Singapore men. Uh, last year, it was the latest report last year uh, says that it's number three. So it has just climbed from number three to number two. And so this is something I wish every man will take note. Take your blood test called PSA. That is simply a blood test where it stands for prostate specific antigen. You can check with any GP or polyclinic. When you do that, I recommend doing at least once if you are older than 50 years old so that you know whether mm. there's a possible chance cancer cells can be, can be hiding in your prostate. When the mm. ESA blood test is high, sometimes it's because of BPH. It's not cancerous. Sometimes it can be a prostate infection, but there are a small number of patients with high blood test PSA that may have cancer inside. So once you do a blood test, immediately... Uh, the doctor can recommend what to do next for you. Because a lot mm. of prostate cancer in stage one, early stage or two, there's no symptom. You feel perfectly fine. So my recommendation as one of the things to do for prostate health is that if you're older than 50 years old, do check your blood test for a tumor marker called PSA. The other thing to know is that if your family member, like your father, uh, or your uncle has prostate cancer, 
there is a higher chance you get prostate cancer because it's genetic. It will be passed down mm. along the genes to you uh, from the time you're born. You already have that gene. So if your family has a prostate cancer, for example, the father or the uncle has it on the father's side, please check your PSA blood test even before you're 50 years old, sometimes 40. Mm. Yeah, in US, sometimes 35 years old is a time when they are asked to go and check. So just mm. check with your, your, your parents and family about the history of prostate cancer. I see. So, um, okay, another question is, uh, what is your recommended age when it comes to you know, doing all this checkup for, for prostate health? And roughly what, how frequent should it like, be carried out every year? There are different uh, regimes, different schedule for checking prostate. In US, uh, they recommend doing a prostate check much earlier than us. But in Singapore, we do not have a, a prostate cancer screening program. If you go and look at the website for Singapore Cancer Society, they only have a few cancer that the government will be helping you and recommending do a screening. For example, mammogram for breasts, pap smear for ladies, and also mm. to check any blood in the feces uh, to look for colorectal cancer. Those are some of the screening programs that can actually help to detect early cancer. Unfortunately, in Singapore, uh, prostate cancer screening is not one of the Singapore program. But I do recommend people to do it at least 50 years and older. That's because when you look at the latest Singapore cancer uh, registry, they publish a 50-year review for the last 50, 50 years. Prostate mm -hmm. cancer in 2017, do you, do you, can you guess uh, how many percent of patients, when they first see me, they are stage 4? You know stage 4 is the worst, right? Yeah. We yeah. know someone, yeah. Who are those? How many percent? How many percent of the people who visited you? Uh? No, who... When they are first diagnosed with prostate cancer, 30%. So every 10 that's a lot. patients, that's a lot. Wow. Every 10 patients, three patients already in stage four is too late. While seven are earlier, three. And 10 years before that, it's only 25%. So even more mm. stage four prostate cancer is found because many men do not know that they actually need to protect and check their prostate health. So I do recommend uh, if you're more than 50, at least check once your blood test or PSA. But I must also uh, confess that in Singapore, there's no prostate cancer screening program uh, as of now. Oh, we don't have that. We don't have that. So when they go for the checkup, it's not a screening. They, it's straight away like a checkup already. It's yeah, not like just a... check. Ask your GP or uh, when you do your, for your normal checkup, just say, uh, can I check my prostate marker? Then they have to add mm. in a blood test called PSA, prostate specific condition. Okay, okay. So uh, also another question, like one of them actually say, uh, he or she, uh, like uh, I went went to toilet very frequently and also like at night and also observed a lot of bubbling. Not sure whether this bubbling could be a contribution of a sign of prostate health. Like not, ah, not bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> bubbles in urine is always a a question that I get as well. So if the bubbles disappear quickly, then you don't have to worry so much. But if the bubbles stay there for a long time and doesn't go away, and so there are two things we always worry about if the bubble continue to stay on the water level and doesn't go away. Number one, we need to check whether there's diabetes because bubbles may stay there. Second thing is mm. whether there's a problem with a kidney function. Sometimes when kidney function is not so good, we will have some protein inside the urine that can be leaking out into urine and this will form bubbles as well. So you look at the bubbles, if it doesn't disappear or you're worried, go to any doctor. They can simply check your urine for any sugar or diabetes or proteins for any potential leakage of this uh, protein in the urine. Uh, always check with the doctor if you're not sure. Thank you so much, doctor. You have really answered a lot of questions that our audience raised. So thank you so much for coming for this session. And really hope that really hope that next time we'll be able to invite you again and come for the next session also. Okay, oh. hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a very fun session.
Thanks a lot.